Hello, this is Chris with Cable Equipment. It is March of 2020. I'm just going to spend some time in this video going over the steps in Operation Center to create a setup file for your Precision Ag display. Before I get into it, just want to call out that we are open. We're here to help this spring. Uh, if you want some current updates on services that we're offering to get through this time, you can go visit our website, kibbleeq.com, or follow us on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I'm sure I'm missing a few. Uh, also on our website, if you haven't got, got a copy of uh, these on our banner, we do have our new parts guides uh, that match up your, your version of a planner monitor uh, with your generation of a precision egg display. So with that, let's get into Operation Center. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, a lot of different things and we'll break it into chunks so you can skip ahead in case you just want to learn about a certain area. I'm going to talk about the new terms and conditions, land manager, equipment, product manager, team manager, setup builder, files, data manager, managing prescriptions, and then lastly, how to learn more. So first off, uh, John Deere's updated the terms and conditions of the operation center. Really not a whole lot of change. The good thing is they're going to ask you when you log in, if you haven't done this already, who actually owns this account. Uh, it's for uh, data privacy and security. So when you log in, there's going to be a several step process, but it's Basically, they're going to ask who owns it. Is it a personal organization? So for me, I'd be putting my full legal name. Uh, or if is it a business, if there was a LLC or another legal entity uh, who actually owns the name. So this is a good thing. Uh, John Deere is just showing their concern and, and uh, awareness of data privacy and security. And so this is a quick quick process. If you got any questions, let us know. So I'm going to use an, a demo account that we have. So if it doesn't look perfect, that's that's why. Uh, but here is the landing page of myjohndeer.com. It's changed over the winter. So instead of having a bunch of tiles with applications, we got our applications on the left-hand side. It's pretty nice. We got our equipment listed here. So if you have your equipment in Operation Center, it'll show up here. If you have uh, the serial number of the, the item, you click on that, and it'll actually take you into the relevant parts catalog uh, very quickly. So then I'm going to click on Operation Center, and I have it loaded up. Uh, by the way, if you are using a different browser, uh, Operation Center uh, likes Chrome. Uh, so if you're having issues with Internet Explorer, that's that's generally why. So a quick uh, overview of the interface that pops us into this Operation Center map page first by default. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have the username, what organization you're working with, uh, notifications uh, help this is nice and there's a really good help yet documentation here uh, release notes so what's changed recently anytime you see something called out as new that means that uh, something's changed since you've logged in and then on the left hand side we can view fields here and we can view our equipment here and then this I call it the Rubik's Cube beyond here calls it tools this is the menu that has all the different applications that we're gonna we're gonna work with today so to start, we're going to start managing our fields, boundaries, guidance lines, and flags. So that's done in Land Manager. So you can either scroll down this list of tools and find Land Manager. You can find it up here if it's in your recent items that you've accessed. Or I'm going to search it here. This works for everything. Just got to spell it correctly. And now we're going to open Land Manager. Okay, so this is our demo account again. I'll just kind of go over how this works. Uh, Left-hand side is how you can filter. If you're just if you got a lot of fields or a lot of guidance lines and you want to find them really quickly, uh, you can either just type just like the other menu, type east. So that's gonna filter out items just containing east. Uh, if you want uh, just a certain farm, you can do that too. If you want just areas with point flags, you can do that too. So a lot of different ways to find the information, especially when you get a long list of uh, fields and farms, it can be troublesome. Um, if you've had a field in the past and you archived it, you toggle this area here to find those fields that are in your archive. They're not t t completely deleted, but they're hidden, so you don't have to look at them all the time. Uh, here's where we have our, our full field list. 
I'm going to click on this one, East Bluff. So if I want to see it, I untoggle that eyeball, and now I can see all the assets related to that field. See my tile line and my flags here. Uh, if I want to look at my AB lines, and then it brings up information on the right. So, uh, in generally speaking, if nothing's really changing, uh, you can either keep everything the way it is. Uh, if you want to hide stuff, you can archive it. So, if you want to get rid of this, these AB lines, I know working with a lot of people that have a lot of guidance lines that they really don't use anymore. Uh, you can select all the ones that you don't want and hit archive and then they'll get hidden so they won't end up on your setup card same thing with boundaries um, and flags so they all operate pretty much the same if you have an a b line or a boundary or anything that you want to uh, copy and make a duplicate you can do that here too if you would need to add fields or boundaries or guidance lines hit create new we're going to do a new field and i'm going to choose client in the farm where that lands name it and then it shows you exactly how that's going to look on the display in case there's maybe too many characters or using a character that isn't supported on the on the screen hit save and now I should be able to find that in here test 2020 so very similar, uh, same thing with boundaries, tracks, and fields, or flags, excuse me. Um, very similar interface. Uh, one nice tip here too is once you get all set and you have everything that you want, um, there's a nice PDF export. You can select the fields that you want for this export. I'm going to hit export. You can dump it into a spreadsheet or a PDF. Okay, then that downloads into my downloads folder. So I click it to open it. It's going to open up my PDF viewer. And if all my fields were relatively close in my demo account, they're spread out. The first page is all of your fields, and then each subsequent page has the field names, the boundaries, any guidance lines or flags that are associated with that field. So might be a nice tool to print off and put in your cab. Uh, so that that is land manager next up we're going to touch on equipment okay to manage our equipment there is no special equipment application we're going to go back into operation center map and if you have equipment that's got jd link installed and has been have been loaded here already uh, you don't need to add anything. Uh, if you have a, an item that does not have JD-Link, you'll have to add it manually. So here on the left-hand side, I have my equipment tab, and I can filter through and see all the equipment. Uh, generally speaking, if something has a serial number tag to it, you can see this one has a... If I click on it, it shows me the location. If, it, if I click on it and it pops open this window, it does not have JD-Link installed, or it's not an active subscription. If I need to add a machine that doesn't have JD Link that's not here, I hit this plus symbol, and then it walks me through the steps of what to uh, uh, what I need to add it to Operation Center. If you have a serial number, that's handy uh, because that will then link it into your landing page in My John Deere, so you can look up parts real easily. Everything with an asterisk is required, and when you're done, you hit Add, and then it'll plop it uh, depending on the the type that you selected in one of these buckets. And just, just a tip too, uh, you're gonna need, if you're gonna be planting, you need to make sure you have a uh, tractor and planter set up. If you're combining, you're gonna need to have a head set up as well. Otherwise, it will not let you create that setup file. If you do need to edit any of the settings, I've had this question a few times. Um, once you click on the machine, hit this little info button. So this is where you can actually change the name 
uh, or the pin that's displayed. Uh, this is really handy, especially when you're looking at it on the mobile apps. If you have multiple of the same uh, machine, you can give them either a fleet number or uh, you know, if only one operator always runs it, you can, you can customize that to show up in your view. Very common we, where we see the model number, um, maybe your farm name and then a serial number uh, on, the, on the back side to find it. Um, offsets, this is where we uh, can punch in the offsets that show up in the display. If it is a machine that was uh, from the factory with JD-Link, it would bring in a lot of these automatically and you don't have to mess with them, but it's the same thing that you would enter in your display to make sure that your uh, section control offsets are working right. Um, if there is something in here that you want to delete, you no longer have it. Um, if it's JD-Link and you trade it in, generally speaking, that'll get transferred out of your account automatically when the dealer does that. Um, or if you want to get rid of something that you manually created, you hit this little button here, check next to it, and then hit delete. And then it's gone. Also, you see this little icon here that says send file. Um, if it's a machine with JD Link and wireless data transfer, uh, you can click on that, hit send file, and then select the files that you want to send to that machine. Pretty basic. Uh, you just have to play around with it a little bit, but that is equipment. Now we're going to cover product manager. So this is where we uh, set up our varieties and our chemicals, uh, fertilizers that we want to have in the display to document. So I'm going to type, type product manager. In general, a lot of the brands and uh, varieties and uh, herbicides, fertilizers that you uh, would use are going to show up here um, in a database so you don't have to type all them automatically. You see that we have a lot of stuff in our demo account already uh, set up. Um, if I want to search for, let's see if I have anything from Pioneer in here. So that's Pioneer seed varieties that uh, show up. You can see we have a full list, um, the brand, what it is, and the date it was modified. So very similar to the land manager, if I have some products that I'm not going to use anymore, I can hit archive and it's going to go away for the time being. Um, if you want to dump a full list of your products and do a uh, Excel file, you can do that, which is kind of nice. Um, and then if you want to add, very similar to Land Manager, you hit Add Product. So let's see here, we're going to add a variety. We're going to do corn. Let's do pea. And you can see here's P0306 and all the different uh, versions of traits that it comes in. So you can click, that. and then you can do this multiple times. So you don't have to hit next all the time. I can go now, I'm gonna type, let's see. Okay, so now it's decal pitch 438. And then you see it just keeps on building it here. Um, and if there's a variety or a product that is not in here, you can hit add and then that'll walk you through how to add a custom product. But in general, it's nice if you can stick with these uh, naming conventions, then you don't have uh, things that are misspelled um, in the monitor. Um, also, you can see when we talk about uh, herbicides, if you want to create a tank mix, you can select more than one and hit generate tank mix and then it will create a tank mix for you to select in your monitor. Uh, one hidden feature here that uh, folks miss, if you have tank mixes that you created and you cannot find them, you need to click on this button right here and switch it to tank mixes. And now here we can see these uh, tank mixes that we've created in the past and we can add them if we want or we can archive them. So that is product manager. Now we are going to look at team manager. This is an area that doesn't get a whole lot of attention. But this is where you can set up operators to show up in the display if you want to keep track of who's doing what. 
Uh, this is also where you edit permissions of who has access uh, to your account, to your operation. So again, very similar interface to land manager and product manager. Uh, we have our list of partners, or excuse me, team members here. Uh, you see there's different designations. Staff would be a person in your operation that's gonna have their own operation center account or my, my John Deere account. So they would create a, a my John Deere account themselves using their email address and then you can grant them access so they can log into the mobile apps or here to see just equipment, equipment and fields, agronomy information. Uh, this is also where you'd see uh, any co-ops or agronomists that you work with that uh, you have granted access to. That's it. But that would be a partner. So a partner would be an equipment dealer uh, or a third party like an agronomist uh, or an insurance agent. An operator is just somebody that does not have access to my John Deere. You want them listed in the system so you can have their, their name as an option in the drop down menu for uh, the display. So same thing here, hit add to your team, choose what you want. If you're gonna add a partner or a staff member, you're gonna need their email address that they used for their My John Deere account. And once you do that, it'll generate a, uh, an email fat finger syndrome there. And then this is where uh, you can adjust the settings. If you have any questions on this, you can let us know. Uh, it's very granular. Uh, what's nice about these settings is that if you have people that you don't want access to everything, let's say you just want them to have access to equipment, you can lock down these other permissions. Um, if you want them to have only access to certain fields, you can do that. I've got examples of people that uh, have multiple landlords and they just want the landlord to see certain fields or uh, certain Agronomists only see certain fields. Uh, so yeah, so that's how you set up that. And then you hit next after you adjust all these and then it would send them a partner request. Uh, if you just wanna add a operator and you can create a new one or if I, you wanna create one from a staff member and you put their license number there, you can hit save. And then now that you have both Blue Earth Kia as a operator and a staff member. Okay, so all that prep work was to make sure we had all the assets ready for Setup Builder. And this has changed throughout the, the last year or so. So this is how we're going to pick everything that we just got set up and place it into a file format for our display. So it's nice, it, it lays it out in a flow of every step we're gonna take throughout this process. Uh, we do have our previous setup files that we've created. So if you have one in the past, you just wanna grab, you can download it quickly right there. See it's downloaded right here. Uh, so we'll go through this. Okay, so first you gotta choose your display type. We're gonna go with a 2630 or Gen 4. And you gotta create a File line, it's good to be descriptive. Let's say spring planter, okay. Uh, you can create from existing one too, uh, if you just wanna make a tweak of what you had in the past. A uh, Setup Builder Classic, uh, this is uh, the, the legacy version of Setup Builder. Uh, they don't have variety locator built into here yet, uh, but they should by the time we'd be normally harvesting uh, this fall. So now you can see down here, we are gonna follow this flow and hit start. So now this is where, you know, land manager, we started there. So um, this is where we can pick the fields that we want. Uh, and if we only want to select specific guidance lines. So uh, you can either click this button and click everything. Um, you can also just selectively choose, I'm gonna want all flags and I want all boundaries so you can see how it's been it clicks here all guidance lines so you can work your way through or I'm just going to click I'm going to do everything um, if you did have variety locator already uh, set up you can click that there too so again a similar interface to land manager and product manager and teams I'm gonna hit next 
And now it's going to choose what display, or excuse me, which equipment we're going to send. Um, I'm going to choose this tractor, and then it will get mad at you if you don't, um, if you don't select an implement as well. So I'm going to choose implement, and I'm going to choose this planter. You can see back at this machine, um, it'll tell you if it's wirelessly data transfer enabled. Uh, there's a method for you to. As you do all this, it creates the setup file. It'll actually shoot the setup file out to the machine if it does have wireless data transfer. Next, uh, products. So we can filter this just by seed or chemicals. Again, very similar interface, which is kind of nice. I'm just going to choose everything just to keep it simple. Here's your tank mixes. Uh, next, choose your operator. And then summary. So now it it gives you the summary of what we're going to create, and it does call out this setup file will be sent to all selected wireless data transfer enabled machines. And I'm going to hit create file. Okay, so it tells us that it's being created. It actually calls it out right here. And then now we can either create another one or we can go right to files manager. So that is setup builder. Next, we're going to go to files. So now that we have our setup file created, we're going to get it into our display. So we can hit go to files manager right here or going to search for files. And you can see we have two files here, files, which is a tool that's going to be going away soon and then files manager. Anytime you can, you can barely see it here, but it says beta right here. That means that it's almost completely done, uh, but there's still a few things to go. So in files, this is where all the files come in, either manually uploaded uh, through a USB stick, transferred from JLink, uh, shared from a partner, uh, or uploaded manually into the system. So you can see here we have our setup file, and just like Teams, our T manager, uh, product manager, etc. It's a very similar interface. Um, I'm going to click it and so check the box. And now I can either download it right to my computer. I can assign it. So that's sending it to a different partner. Uh, reprocess, that's generally for other files. Or I could transfer it right to a piece of equipment that has wireless data transfer. So I'm going to hit download. And then it's going to ask, do I want to do it? to a desktop or device or John Deere Data Manager. We're gonna do both. Uh, John Deere Data Manager, before I click on that, if you go into your Rubik's Cube and you find John Deere Data Manager, uh, this is a program that it will tell you what it is and you hit download, then you install it on your, comp your computer and then you log in uh, with your username and password. So it is basically is acting as a bridge between my John Deere Operation Center and your USB stick. I'm going to download John Deere Data Manager. And you can see it's right here. It's got a little dot JDDM. I'm going to double click on it. And Okay, it popped up in another window. So it popped up my data manager. It says, where do I want to download the files to? So I choose my USB stick location, hit transfer. It's also a good idea when you're uh, doing this to make sure your USB stick is clean and has enough capacity for the files. And then you'll get this message. Now you can take your stick out and you can uh, put this in your display and do your set of files. Um, if you have a, we don't have any equipment in this account that is uh, capable of wireless data transfer, otherwise we would do that. Um, and then if you download to your desktop, it does the same thing, very similar, but now it's in the zip folder. I'm going to show in folder. Uh, the key thing here. is when this gets downloaded, it's in a zipped folder. It says compressed or zipped. 
And so in order to load this to your display, you'll have to right click it, hit extract all. When you hit extract. So now this is the folder that I can transfer to my USB stick if I'm not using data manager. So if you're not using a, a Windows machine. And there you go. That is Files Manager. Okay, one of the last things we're gonna cover is prescriptions and how to upload those into Operation Center. So I'm still in my Files Manager. Uh, this is gonna be a great area for us to look at the Answer Center. And this is uh, how to learn more if you're struggling and you're trying to figure out a solution. You hit the question mark, Hit go to help documentation. I've already opened that tab. It's going to open this home page with a bunch of information. Uh, really good articles here about all the different topics that we've talked about uh, and more. So if you are looking for something and you can't find it, I'm just gonna type in prescription. And so now it goes, a lot of the prescription builders that are built into Operation Center, but I'm gonna click on this third-party prescription. So I got some shape files from a uh, agronomist that I'm working with. So this goes to these steps that we're gonna do right now. So we're gonna go into our folder. So we got this folder from our, our uh, agronomist that's got these shape files. So in order to create a way to make this upload. We're going to create new folder Rx and then I'm going to move these into this Rx folder. Now if I'm going to take a USB stick and manually put this into my display I would just drag this Rx folder now onto that USB stick uh, so it's on the top level of the directory. Uh, if I'm going to upload it to my John Deere I right click it and I hit Send to compressed folder. There we go. And you can see they even have a little animation how this works here. Okay, so now in the files page, I'm gonna hit upload file. And I'm just gonna drag it. Right there. And there it is. So now if I want to send that to a display, check, transfer to equipment, or I can send it to a partner. With that, that's everything we're going to cover today. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local Kibble location. Thank you very much, and be safe this spring. One last thing I just want to mention, uh, if you are a Pioneer Seed customer uh, and or a, a granular customer, they are offering an incentive for a free modular telematics gateway. That's M MTG. That's the basically the cell phone controller that we put in the equipment to uh, do the wireless data transfer features that I talked about uh, during this screencast. So if you got any interest, please reach out to uh, any one of us or to your Pioneer rep. This runs until May 1st and includes the hardware itself and that uh, MTG comes with three years of wireless data transfer service included. Thank you very much and be safe.